What is going on everybody on YouTube? This is Endermail here and today I am bringing you guys another one of my life stories. It's been about three months since I've done a life story. Well, not that long. It's been like a month and a half. And my last life story was how I got a lap dance when I was 10 years old. So if you missed that one and you want to check it out, go ahead and look in the description of this video and click on the link. So today's life story is going to be about how I almost lost my life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, pretty intense story, and so we're just going to get right into this thing. I was 12 years old, and I was in 7th grade. Now, this is a ski story, and I thought it would be fitting since it is winter time. Now, I'm down here in Florida, and there's absolutely no snow, but for those of you up north, you are seeing some snow, and maybe some of you ski yourselves, but this is um, a ski story, and... I was in seventh grade and I had been skiing for three years and I was on my junior varsity ski team at the high school so if you don't if you know anything about high school sports basically you have to be in high school to play on high school teams but I was so good at racing I was actually put on the junior varsity team for my high school when I was only in seventh grade so I'm not a bad skier I'm I'm good at what I do I was good at skiing and so it's not like I was just a bad skier and being dumb, but this was at the beginning of the year, so the, the slopes just opened, and this is in Mankato, Minnesota, so the snow is really early, like it snows on Thanksgiving and doesn't melt until, well, like one time we went trick-or-treating in the snow, so if that tells you anything, it was October and it was already snowing, then it doesn't melt until like May, April, you know? <laughs> So it's always snow, so you know, I had a lot of time to get really good at skiing, and I was pretty good at skiing. And so this was at the very beginning of the season. Um, the slope always opened at about Thanksgiving time, you know, that's when they had enough snow and they could determine that would, it would stay cold enough throughout the rest of the winter where they could keep the slopes open and running. So this was early December, it was actually December 12th I think, or December 13th, one of those two days. I still have the little lift ticket. Um, that I had when I had this accident, but I don't have it with me right now, so I'm not exactly sure on the date, but it was, it was early December. So the slopes had just opened, and I was getting my bearings, and they had this hill called the Expert Only Hill, a double black diamond. The way the rankings are set up for the hill is there's a green circle, which is the very easy hills, like bunny slopes, and you know, the starter hills to, for people to begin on. Then there are blue squares, which are intermediate, moderate hills that are a little bit more challenging, but they're not too crazy for people who are like weekend skiers who just, you know, are decent at skiing and want a little bit more excitement. Then there's black diamonds, which are the very hard, steep hills. Like, they're very difficult for, like, expert skiers. Then there's the double black diamond, which is experts only hill. Double black diamond. So it's a crazy steep hill with lots of twists and turns, a lot of bumps, and a lot of trees. So... I decided that I wanted to go on this, you know, I'd only been skiing for about a week into the season, and I was with a bunch of my friends, I had a whole group of buddies, and we were going to go down the hill, it was all of our first times for that season, I mean, I've been down the expert only hill the year before, like, tons of times, like, it's not a big deal to me, I'm good at skiing, this is what I do, I'm just going to take my way down this hill, so, we took up the lift, um, there was two, well, me and my friend in one lift, and a friend and another friend in the other lift behind us. So they were in the lift behind us, and there were snowboarders. So snowboarders always have to sit at the top of the hill for a good, like, two extra minutes to, you know, strap up their boots and get ready to go. But skiers, you know, we can just get off the lift and go, because that's what we do. We're fast and smooth and just get what we need to do done. So I was starting down the hill and my friend who was a snowboarder just got off the lift and he was like yo wait up and I was already starting down the hill I looked back at him to be like I'm going man you know just like see you later you gotta catch up just you know it's expert only hill like I'm gonna be done in like two seconds so I start down the hill while I'm looking back at him and little to my knowledge there is actually a man created jump that some of the snowboarders created on the hill because like you could pick up so much speed on this hill so they would they built a huge jump where basically the hill wasn't that wide but it was pretty long you know from tree gap to tree gap it was probably about 20 feet wide so they created a jump on the edge of the hill which launched people over across to the other side of the hill and they could you know snowboard or ski back down the hill but I was not aware of this especially since I was looking back at my other friend who was just getting off the lift and calling my name and 
Unfortunately, I hit the jump, but I did not hit the jump the way it was intended to, so I didn't launch across the hill. Instead, I hit it sideways, and I launched straight into the trees. It was pretty crazy. I was going pretty fast, and I hit the tree about, you know, uh, I think it was eight feet in the air. So I was up in the air eight feet, and I smacked into the tree. Now, all I remember was laying in the snow. I kind of opened my eyes, and, like, my friend was just zooming past me. I didn't know what he was doing. And then I, like, passed out again. Like, I don't know if I was passed out or what happened, but that's all I remember. I just remember seeing my friend ski down past me, and then everything went black again. And the next thing you know, I'm sort of awake, and I see there's a lady and her husband. They were from Iowa, and they were just coming up to visit some family. And the husband was a firefighter and the wife was a nurse. So that, that's pretty lucky if you ask me to have a nurse and a firefighter there ready to help you after you've just had a terrible ski accident. But I was like, you know what? No, I'm fine. I want to get up. I've, I've crashed a million times before. Let me just get up, ski it off, and I'll feel better in a little bit. And they were like, no, you got to stay still. You just had a terrible accident and you just woke up. And I was like, what is going on? And I honestly, I couldn't move. I couldn't even feel my body. And so... I would try to like move and I was just like begging like let me just get up if you just let me get up I can ski it off and everything will be okay but they were like no you got to stay down next thing you know the hill rescue team or whatever you want to call them like they're sort of like the skiing ambulance and they showed up and they put me on a stretcher and then strapped me into a sled and then they tied me to the back of a snowmobile and that's basically all I can remember and they take me down the hill and as we get to the bottom, I see a whole huge crowd of people, and that was absolutely embarrassing to me, you know, seeing all those people. And I don't know how long I'd been, like, knocked out up there, because obviously it was enough time for a whole bunch of people to gather down there and see what was going on. And I could see a bunch of the faces, they were a bunch of my classmates, you know, it was a small town, so everybody who skied went to this same hill, and it was, it was just absolutely embarrassing because I felt like I was fine I could get up and ski it off but no they had to strap me into a stretcher and snowmobile me down the hill and take me back to the little lodge where they had all their safety and medical equipment set up then they carried me in onto the table and I just remember my mom coming in and she was absolutely terrified crying and I was like literally they had me on oxygen and I was just shaking I don't know why I was shaking but I was shaking so hard that I was like bouncing off the table and it was, it was terrifying to me. Then they put me in an ambulance, and they took me over to the hospital. And I stayed in the hospital for about five hours, and my brother had a basketball tournament. You know, he's a huge basketball player. He was in eighth grade at the time, and they had a basketball tournament. Him and my dad left and came down to where I was, and it was about a two-hour drive, and they left because the doctors called and told them that they didn't think I would actually make it. And so... It was a huge ordeal, and my brother and dad came down, and they saw me, and I was like, you guys didn't need to come here. This isn't a big deal at all. Like, I just felt like it wasn't a big deal. And then once they finally said I was ready to go, that was my first time attempting to stand up, and I honestly, I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. I barely was able to get in a wheelchair. That's how crazy it was. Like, that's when it hit me that... I am seriously in trouble here, like, I had no idea that it was that bad. If I were to try to get up and ski that thing off, I probably would have just rolled down the hill and injured myself worse. But the doctor said that if I was not wearing a ski helmet, I would have died that day on the ski slope. So that is a very good moral to the story. Be sure and wear a helmet whenever you're doing anything, whether it's bike riding, rollerblading, skiing, snowmobiling, just make sure you wear a helmet, motorcycle just because it can save your life like it did mine and now I'm here today making videos on YouTube and it would never have happened if I wouldn't have been wearing the proper safety equipment so that that was very very um, terrifying news to hear that it could have killed me if I wasn't but it was also very reassuring to know that I made the right choice to wear the helmet that day it was about a month and a half later and I was begging and begging to just go skiing I really want to just get hit the slopes again and the doctor told me not for a month so the day it was a month later so like January 14th or whatever I finally was able to go back skiing and it was awful I could not 
pick up my legs to move the skis. My back hurt so bad. My head hurt. It was just an awful experience. I was obviously still very hurt like a month later. It was hard to sit in class because of the back pain and the shoulder pain and the, just the throbbing heads. You know, I went back to school about, uh, I think, like a week and a half after the accident and so it was just it was a very struggle of a winter for me but you know I did eventually get back into the groove of things and start skiing good again skiing well I think it was about three months before I tried the expert only hill again but I obviously conquered it <laughs> without crashing you know I had a lot of wipeouts throughout the rest of that season but nothing too crazy but that is basically how I almost died now I hope you guys did learn a little bit from the story about how important it is to wear helmets. I still wear a helmet when I bike ride, you know I'm 17 years old and I'm still wearing helmets no matter what I do just because of that traumatic moment that could have taken my life. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoy the live stories, please be sure to leave a like on the video. I enjoy making these live stories just so you guys get to know me a little bit better and also to inform and share some funny stories, some important life lessons, you know. I mean, as much life lessons as a, somebody who's been alive for 17 years can give. But thank you all for watching. I am Endermail, and I'm out. Peace.